the Lord and good morning, saints. I am here to render the Living Church's weekly happenings. Join us every Sunday morning for virtual Sunday school beginning at 10 o'clock a.m. for toddlers, 12.30 for beginners, 1 o'clock for preteens, 1.30 for teens, closing out at 2 o'clock p.m. with adults. Every Monday through Friday morning at 5 o'clock a.m. as we beseech the Lord through morning intercessory prayer via conference call. Noonday prayer is held every Tuesday and Friday via conference call. Join us for Bible study Wednesdays at noon via conference call and Wednesday evenings beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. for corporate prayer via Zoom followed by 7 p.m. Zoom Bible study. It is that time of year again, the time that we celebrate our pastor and first lady. Join us for the entire month of September as we celebrate 34 years of pastoralship. This year's theme, Call to Make Disciples for Jesus. Please note that all services will now be held virtually, Wednesday nights via Zoom and Sunday mornings via Facebook Live and live stream. Out of an abundance of caution, all services will be held virtually, including this year's first Sunday pastoral anniversary service. This year's speakers include Pastor Ralph Wilson, Bishop Jenkins, Elder Adams, Apostle Rubin, Bishop Joseph, Apostle Barry, Bishop Thomas, Bishop Wilder, and Apostle Moultrie. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday evenings via Zoom and Sunday mornings via Facebook Live and live stream as we celebrate our pastor for the entire month of September. Please keep in mind, we are asking that all adult members prepare a love offering of $34 to represent the 34 years of pastoralship for at least four services. That will total $136 per person. With the goal, while the goal is 34 for four, more is surely welcome. You can give your gifts via push pay under pastor's aid or mail in a check. Please be reminded that all Zoom meeting links, meeting IDs, and passwords are located on our church website at www.tlcooljc. Again, that's www.tlcooljc.org. This concludes this morning's announcements. We ask that you please govern yourselves accordingly.
morning and praise the Lord, everyone. On behalf of our Pastors Aid Committee, we would like to welcome you to this virtual experience as we commemorate 34 years of pastoral leadership. Today is our first Sunday service featuring greetings from Bishop Jenkins in New Jersey and a word from TLC's very own Elder Doster. This entire month, we will be celebrating Apostle Ronnie L. Parson Sr. and First Lady Rubina Parson. Meet us here on Facebook Live and via live stream virtually every Sunday at 11 a.m. And on Wednesday evenings, join us via Zoom. You don't want to miss this month-long salute to our honorees. We will have dynamic speakers and greeters from North Carolina to Trinidad. This is indeed a wonderful opportunity for our pastor and first lady to be poured into and for us to be fed. And living church members, let us not forget our 4 for 34 celebratory campaign. Today can be a day. Again, to all, we welcome you. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy, prosperous, blessed 34 pastoral anniversary on behalf of Apostle Ronnie Parson and Lady Parson, and the Living Church family. It is indeed a rich blessing for me to say just a few words about a man that I have known and have been very close to, who have demonstrated such character and such a great and powerful love for ministry. And any time there is a man of God who can show forth his love for the people of God. This to me is so special. I remember uh, 34 or more years ago that a young man that time, by the name of Ronnie uh, Parson, who met some young people from our church uh, on a basketball court. And after the game, he was invited to come and visit our church. As he came uh, on a Sunday evening in an ABYPU session, where we were teaching on the seven reasons why we baptize in water in Jesus' name. And somewhere in the discussion, uh, then Ronnie Parson wanted to know that if that's what the words say, that's what I want to do. Immediately left the ABYPU session and went to the adjacent all purpose hall. Ronnie Parson in water in Jesus' name. We left the pool in those days. There was a soul that they were seeking to get in a place in God that he had never been. We were all joined together. 
we left the pool and came back to the sanctuary and got on our knees. And it was about perhaps four or five minutes that there was a young man by the name of Ronnie Parsons speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. As the Spirit of God give utterance. It is something about the Pentecostal outpouring of the gift of the Holy Ghost because when God filled you, he always does a great job. It was a few years after having received the gift of the Holy Ghost, this young man became an ordained elder in the churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. Later became the pastor of the church in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And from pastor to bishop, and from bishop to the apostleship. Let us give God a hallelujah for the life of a young man devoted and dedicated to kingdom work. And I look back over the years and as we can continue to process the greatness of the blessings of the almighty God. What he's able to do, there is a word that he's given us now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we are. And above all that we think, we're so thankful for Apostle Parson and his loving wife, Rabina, and his entire family. And certainly, God has his hand on the life of Apostle Parson. word from a passage of scripture that I thought was in order at this time. It is found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and beginning at verse 5. Read on this wise, now he that hath wrought us for the same thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that while this, we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Surely the power of the anointed word of God is intact. And one of the insights that I often share 
has to do with the apostle Paul and his ministry, his faithfulness in ministry. And when the time came, he saw something that was beyond his earthly ministry. And henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Whom the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all those who will love his appearing. And again, we want to congratulate you, Apostle Parson, for the 34 years that the Almighty God have held your hand and has given you guidance and directions. We are declaring that we have learned and are yet learning how to in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. God be with you. God keep you, God preserve you unto his coming. And many, many, many more years until Jesus call us to meet him in the media. God bless you in Jesus' name. There's a voice that cries out in the silence Searching for a heart that will love him Longing for a child that will give a their all Give it all, he wants it all And there's a God that walks over the earth He's searching for a heart that is desperate And longing for a child who will give a their all Love. He wants it all. He says, Love me, love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me, serve me with your Does a God that walks over the earth? He's searching for a heart that is desperate. The mom for a child that will give him their all, give it all. He wants it all. He said, Love me, love me with your heart. It all today. Serve me, serve me with your life now. It's it all today. Bow down, let go of your idols. It's it all today. It's it all today. It's it all today. It's it all. More of you, more of you, more to love.
Praise the Lord and good morning everyone on this wonderful Lord's Day. I am Executive Elder Darrell DeRosha Dasa of the Living Church Ministries, where our fine pastor is Apostle Dr. Ronnie Lee Parson. Serving along with him is his wonderful wife, Lady Rabina Parson. We're thankful for you being with us this morning to help us celebrate our pastor's 34th anniversary. God has truly been merciful to them. God has blessed them. It is his grace and mercy that have kept them. Also, as I love to hear the pastor sing, his grace and mercy. I'm also grateful that the Lord has allowed me to spend 23 years of that 34 years with them. God has truly been faithful. He's truly been a blessing. The Bible says that let the elders that rule well be counted of double honor, especially they that labor in the word and doctrine. And that is in the spirit in which we greet you and pay homage to you. At this time, I'm going to take up our offering. I'm going to start off our offering with $150. The former, my former pastor, the late Bishop Robert I. Thomas, whenever he had a speaking engagement and he was a part of the offertory, he would always tell the people that he's going to start out with a certain amount. And what he was saying is, I want you to understand, when I say I'm starting out, I'm only starting out with that, but I'm going to give more. And that's the spirit that I want you guys to give. Start out with your offering, but continue to sow into this ministry. Continue to sow where God is blessing you. With. Continue to sow where we see the fruits of God the labor, what God is doing in each one of our lives. We all can contest that we've been blessed by the word, blessed by his teaching, blessed by his attitude, his humbleness, everything about him. So we want to bless the man of God. And in my own personal words, I always say that the mint don't print the kind of money that Pastor Parson deserves. The mint don't print that kind of money. going to bless him but when the righteous judge comes he's going to pay him according to what he deserves and god knows he deserves plenty so we appreciate you as we bless the often heavenly father we thank you for this day lord god we thank you lord god for the living church ministries our pastor and first lady lord god we thank you for the living church family lord god we ask you father now to bless the offering that is being given lord god bless every hand lord god that is given those that do not have to give lord god we know that it's just a matter of time that you're going to open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room to receive lord god is when long as they're in your will, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God. Now, now, Father, we ask that you bless the word that's going to come forth this morning, Lord God. Bless the heroes, Lord God. Heal, touch, and deliver, Lord God. Only as you can, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, asking you that we look on this morning we're coming from john the 15th chapter beginning at the first verse and the bible reads on this wise i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit and now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. And when you abide in me, and I in him, in the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Where it is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so ye are my disciples. I'd like to use for a thought this morning, your guaranteed victory is in the connection. 
your guarantee victory is in the connection. And to underpin the message, I like to use for a subtopic, keep the spirit of the vine. Keep the spirit of the vine. In this text, we Jesus is talking to the disciples. He's been with them for a period of time. They've seen him do miracles. They've he kind of tell them about his going away in the 14th chapter, and he cleared up all the confusion about his going away. And in the 13th chapter, we had, he had the Last Supper, and we saw where Judas was about to do what he needed to do because he um, was going to betray Jesus. But Jesus has one more thing that he needs to instill in them. He needs to let them know um, that he is the true vine because later they're going to go out and they're going to minister to others. And they would understand what the vine is because they understood some of the Old Testament that Israel was supposed to be the true vine, not that Israel was supposed to be the vine in which way uh, people would be led, but they were a mess. They just did everything wrong. And Isaiah talks about how they became destructive. Instead of having good grapes, they were had they had bad grapes. In other words, they were, had wild grapes. It talks about them having wild grapes. And then when you deal with wild grapes, those, those are sour grapes. They're not edible. They're not good. They don't produce good fruit. And the one thing that God is about is producing good fruit. He wants good fruit out of you and I. And he lets you know that if you are in him, if you stick with him, if you listen to his words, if you do his commandments, you will produce good fruit. Your victory is in the connection to him. There are all people looking for all kinds of victory. They're looking for all kinds of things, all kinds of help. But the help the strength that you get is in Christ Jesus. The connection, being washed in the blood of the Lamb, being filled with the Holy Ghost, that is the connection that's going to give you good fruit, the fruit that God wants you to have. For a few minutes, I want to give you seven points to help you with your guaranteed victory. Point number one. True vine is the source of your spiritual growth. You've got to know that Jesus, you got to know Jesus for yourself. You got to know that you must stay connected with him. You got to know the true vine. When you understand who the true vine is, you will be able to do things that you didn't think you could do. There was a time when Jesus said, In the background, when you have all those other people, Herod, Augustus, Claudius, Nero, and all those people in his day. But Jesus wanted his disciples to know, who do you say that I am? And then Peter had the correct answer. He said that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. See, you have to know who God is. When you know who God is, it's easier for you to accept the things that you go through in life. When you understand who the true vine is. When Jesus said that he was the true vine, he was not saying it in the context of he's worried about some other person taking his place or, or saying or doing certain things. He was saying in the context of a declaration and Exodus 3.13 said, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say unto them, The God of your fathers who sent me, who shall I say to them? What is your name? And, I, and what shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus say to the children of Israel, I am has sent thee. In Revelation, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Ephesians 1 17. 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that your eyes might be enlightened, that you may know the hope of your calling and the riches of his glory and inheritance of the saint, that you have expedient greatness and power and towards him to believe in the working of his mighty power. You have to know for yourself. You have to know that he is the true vine. You have to know that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. You have to know this. Point number two, clean, cleansing. Faith in the word will help cleanse you. Jesus is explicitly reassuring his disciples that they are not really dead branches, but I need you to understand that I'm cleaning you through the word of God. When you are clean through the word of God, it takes away some of the foolishness, the things. It helps you understand who you are. It helps make you whole. You are clean. You're talking about sanctification, allowing the word to clean you, cleanse you. Colossians 3, 16 says, let the word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. John 8, 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. This will clean bad thoughts. This will clean your idea of other things that you don't understand because you trust God through the cleansing. The uh, Titus 2, 11 says, For the grace of of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The word of God will cleanse you. Paul says, I die daily. God knows that we need to get this stuff off me. Then point number three deals with pruning. Pruning is a very important part. We might not like to be pruned because the Bible talks about whom God, God chases, whom he loveth. There are some times when God has to cleanse some stuff off of us, break away some relationship, keep our minds from filthy thoughts. In other words, some old love things that pop up in our head. God has to prune us. He does. He breaks away relationship, things that you might think is good for you. And God said, I'm taking this away from you. He'll shut some doors because he does not want you in those doors that because he knows down the road that certain things can produce trouble for you. I'm grateful for some of the doors that he have closed in my life because if, because if those doors were open, I might be in a different situation. One thing about God, he makes sure that he does what he needs to do. And as he is pruning, he's taking away the dead parts. He's dead, you know, I'm taking away, you know, the Bible talks about um, laying aside on the weights that easy beside, um, besets us. We need to be pruned. We need to be refreshed so that when you when you prune a tree, when you cut off the dead stuff and you get it the next time you see where the tree grows back, it grows fuller. Now, I'm, a, I'm not a city boy. I'm a city boy, so I don't know too, a lot about a whole lot of pruning, but I know what the Word of God says when it comes to pruning, that He will clean you up. He will take the stuff off you that needs to be taken off so that you can live the best life you can. He knows how to take away. He knows how to separate you from certain things. Even if you don't do it yourself, there are some times when God understands that I have to go in there and do it myself because he's not going to do it. I have need of him. I have work for him to do, and I'm not going to let the enemy stop him because of the dead stuff that he might be thinking, the dead stuff that might be in this way. I will come in and I will do some pruning. It may hurt. We may lose some people that we think we should have been with or however situation is, but I'd rather be with God. One thing I love about Apostle Parson when his honesty, he always said that if I ever get to the place where I'm going to lose out, Lord, take me out of here. In other words, that's some serious pruning right there. But, but in the midst of that, God wants to show us that he loves us, he cares for us, and he will prune us. He will take away everything. 
And David said, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. We got to just let God do what he wants to do with us. Lord, when we pray, we say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. You do it for me, Lord. You, whatever I need, Lord God, you give it to me. What I don't need, Lord God, don't let me have it because I want to be fruitful. I want to be the best person that I can be through you. Fourth thing that I like to talk about, the point is, don't be burned because there is no coming back. When you're not producing fruit and you're not where God wants you to be and you just think that you can continue to do what you want to do and live the way you want to live and not be a part of God's plan. God will allow you to go on for so long, but then there's come a time that you may just get cast out because we don't subscribe to the belief that once saved, always saved. Even the Apostle Paul said that I've got to keep my body under subjection, lest by any other means I'm a preacher that I should be a castaway. Now, here's Paul. He understands that much that I've done. But I don't want to be a castaway because I'm not in the proper frame. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Romans 11.21 says, For God not spared the branches, lest he take away that he spared you. In other words, if God cut off the bad branches, he needs to make sure that you're not one of the ones that get cut off. Um, Galatians talk about, Oh foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? but whose eyes of Jesus Christ have sent forth crucified among you. In other words, who, in the, another part of Galilee, he said, who, who hindered you? You ran well, but who hindered you? You ought to make sure that you and say, I'm not going to be one of those ones. I want to take God at his word. Whatever God says, I believe it. I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to be burned. I don't want to be sent away. And the revelation said, and whose name should not found in the book of life, he was cast into the lake of fire. We don't want to talk about a uh, hell fire no more. We want to talk about blessings and all this other stuff. But there is a hell and it has enlarged itself. So we want to make sure that we do two things. We don't want to go there and we want to make sure that we make uh, disciples out of others so that they don't go there. So we have double duty. One, I ain't trying to go there and I want I don't want my neighbors and brothers and sisters and friends. So in other words, don't be burned because there is no coming back. Number five. First Samuel 17, 45. Then David said unto the Philistine, Thou cometh with me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And then we know the story from them, a rock in the head, down he went. But he let them know who he came with. Philippians said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 1, 6 said, be in confidence of this very thing, that he that has begun a good work in me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You got to know where your help come from. Peter and them, when they was at the temple, they said to the man who was lame, he said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. They didn't take no credit. They said, it's what Jesus is doing. And the man immediately got up. His had strength in his bones and began to leap and to begin to praise God. He praised God because he understood that it was God, not Peter and John, but it was God that did this. You have to make sure that you understand who and where your help comes from. And finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Number six, abiding. You know, the way you have to have my one of my favorite 16 letter words. You got to have some stick to it -ness. You have to be willing to stick to it, abiding in God. No matter what comes, you're going to say, I'm sticking with God. John said, just said, um, John 6, 68, 6, 67 said, then Jesus said it to the 12, will you go off, will you go away also? And Simon Peter answered, said to the Lord, 
Hmm, where should we go? Thou has the words of eternal life. And we believe for sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. In other words, those others left, but we're sticking with God because we know that he's the son of God. We know that Jesus is the Christ. We understand where the power comes from. We understand it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It is the blood that covers our life. We understand we are not going anywhere. In other words, when Paul talks about that I, I, in whatever state I am, I, I'm going to be content. Yeah, we have things, desires, and things that we want to do, but until God blesses us, we are going to be content. We're going to abide in him. We're going to stick with him. We're going to have faith in him. We're not going to allow troubles because when you when you really understand who Jesus is, as the scripture says, we've been man do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You understand that this is just a temporary. Our license it says, don't be bound with temporary change. In other words, you got to understand that who you are in Christ, no matter what binds you up at for a particular moment, that is not the end for you. It's just temporary. So when you can deal with trials, when you deal with situations, don't allow temporary situations to bind you up. Don't allow temporary situations to get you all twisted and disbobulated that you can't think, you can't pray, you can't do what God said. It's only for a, a small period of time. Don't be bound up. Know who God is. Have some stick to it. Have some strength. Get your strength from God. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. You'll find strength in the word and the word comes from the true vine. God is. The word was dwelt among us and made flesh. God is the word of God. And so when you have the word of God, you have the spirit of God, you have all that you need. Stick with God. Abide in him. Be faithful. And then uh, and, um, the seventh one is, I believe, is um, making disciples. You can make disciples because you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to both in Jerusalem and all Judea and to all to the uttermost parts of the world. You have the power to make disciples. You need to make sure that you're planted like the waters of a river. You, 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 in other words, I don't care when, when you when the plant is by the water, it, the roots grab around that rock, no matter how the wind turns and how it goes, it, it, the tree does not fall apart. So that when you're making disciples and you're teaching others, you let them know, yes, you're gonna go through some troubles, Yes, you're going to go through some trials and tribulation, but God is able to sustain you. Why? Because the person that you're talking to has been through some stuff. The person that you've been talking, that you're talking to, you're talking to has had financial difficulties and God has blessed them. The person that you're talking to has had all kind of, maybe some alcohol problems or whatever, drug problems, or whatever, but God has delivered them. How do you make disciples? Because you tell your testimony. The Bible said they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Your testimony is to tell somebody that God has delivered you. If you want to abide, if you want to stay with Jesus, if you you want to have your connection if you want to have fruit you got to abide in the vine you got to abide in the words of the vine the words that's going to keep you it's the word that's going to bless you it's your strength it's how you it's the vitality that's in you and if there is some sickness or anything that you deal with you can go to the father and have him strengthen you but you must abide in the word People are looking for all kinds of remedies. We're going through this pandemic. People are losing their lives. People are going through changes. The world is all in a turmoil. We got floods. We got uh, fires. We got heat. We got all kinds of stuff. 
People are looking for answers. You are the answer. You have the word of God because while they're going through this, you are a part of it. But you're supposed to have enough joy. You're supposed to have enough strength to be able to make someone see that, wow, everyone else is falling apart. But you have something. What is it about you? What is it that you're not just falling apart? They're tell me, help me understand. And then you give them the word. You give them your testimony. You lift them up. You give them strength. And the more you do this, the more God will strengthen you to be able to help them be blessed as if God wants them to be blessed, how he wants them to be blessed. You are supposed to make disciples and you're going to, like I said, when Scripture says he's the God of all comfort, he's going to bless you to go through some stuff so that you can bless others. He's that kind of God. People are looking for help. They're looking for something and you are the help. How are you the help? Because you have the Spirit of God inside of you and you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. We need to be able to be disciples. And like I said, this world is looking for people. They're looking for something that they can latch on to. That's why when you're connected to God and you're doing and God's flowing in your life through his spirit, through his word, teaching you, blessing you, now you can latch on to someone else and have them get some strength from you. We all have been blessed by prayer. We've all been blessed by the word of God. Even when you didn't even think about God, there was someone out there praying. Even though we have a prayer and our parents prayed for us, and maybe you have a parent that didn't pray for you. Maybe you had a parent that didn't the branch because somebody was connected to the vine they was praying lord bless some mother's son lord bless some mother's daughter lord god bless somebody in other words their prayers helped you out if you had parents that didn't know god didn't know nothing about god but now you know god now you have strength in god and it is up to you to stay connected and stay connected the right way stay connected in the word stay connected in faith and believe that God can bless someone else just like he blessed you. This is not for you alone. This is for you to share and bless others. Amen. God is that kind of God. Like I said, the world is looking for something. They're looking for all kinds of things, whether it's drugs, whether it's women, whatever they can do, whatever kind of pleasure that they feel that they can find, they're looking for something. I'm, I'm going to digress a little bit here, but I want to show you how good God is. We know now that this is the football season and everyone's geared up for their favorite team to win a championship. No matter how bad they are, what players are missing, the mindset of them is that they want to see their team win. Well, I want to let you know that we are all a part of the NFL. Every one of the saints are a part of the NFL. What do you mean, Eladasta? Let me explain it to you. Never failing love. Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, I have loved thee with the everlasting love. Therefore, the righteousness with, with righteousness I have drawn thee. We are part of the NFL. F, the NFL, never failing love. We are also a part of the NBA. We are part of the NBA. No better authority. The Bible says when Jesus entered into Capernaum and he came with life sick with the palsy and is grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. But if you send the word, I am my servant shall be healed. I 
am a man of authority, under authority. I have soldiers unto me. I say, go here, and they go there, and cometh, and doeth as they do. But he recognized the right authority. He recognized the top authority. So you are part of the NBA. No better authority. Uh -huh. Ephesians says, if, if he, Ephesians says, what exceeding great power the, towards those that believe in his mighty work and power. Being part of the NBA, there is no better authority. God is far above principality and has dominion over everything. You are part of the NBA. And then you are part of the MLB. My blessings for life. You are part of the MLB. My blessings for life. Ephesians says, Now unto him was able to do exceedingly abundantly all we can think or ask according to the power that worketh in us. Now unto him is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of the Lord with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, glory, dominion, and power, both now and forever. You are part of the MLB, my life blessings. You're also part of the NHL, now holy living. The Bible says, for without lit, thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Ephesians says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called with all lowliness meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and bearing one another in the unity and the bond and the spirit of peace. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood who have called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. The Lord has established the holy people for himself. He has sworn upon thee that they keep his commandments and the Lord and walk in his ways. And you're also a part of the PGA, Perfect Garment Apparel. Ephesians says that he might present you himself a glorious church, not having a spot or a wrinkle or anything that you should be holy without blemish. And then Revelation finishes off by saying, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him to the marriage of the Lamb come. And his wife has made herself ready and she should be granted that she be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, fine linen. This is the righteousness of the saints. When you are in Jesus, you're with Team Jesus. You're always going to win. When I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, I joined Team Jesus. He is the master of all, whatever you want to call your team. Your team. He is the winner. You are part of a great team. You cannot fail when you're in Christ Jesus. And then when you have faith, then you get transferred to the Hall of Fame. You are the Hall of Fame of faith in Hebrews, the Bible says, by faith, Abraham offered a more excellent sacrifice to Cain, which is obtained with a witness that is righteous of God, testifying of the gifts that is bearing the dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith, Noah was warned of things that not seen or prepared. By faith, Abraham was called into a place that he should be. By faith, Isaac and Jacob continued the blessings. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both his sons and his both his sons Joseph and they worshiped him by faith when Joseph died he mentioned his departing of his children concerning their bones by faith when Moses was born he was set aside by his parents so that because of the king's commandments by faith you are now part of the hall of fame when you're saved your faith will make you a part of the hall of fame you are blessed by 
God, you're guaranteed a blessing because of your connection. And because of your connection, you are now entitled to all the rights, privileges, honors pertaining to your faith and the connection in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians says, blessed be the God of our fathers who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Isaiah says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And the, 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 the other Isaiah says that you are, if the enemy comes in, he's going to lift up a standard. You are blessed. You have all the privilege. You are an adopted son, but you are a joint heir. You have everything that the heirs get. You are blessed. You're in the hall of fame. You are blessed. You are covered by everything. And because you have the value, you're keeping the value of the spirit. Bible says that the fruit of the spirit is long suffering, is love, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, tempers against this no such law. You have been blessed by God. Your faith is in God. You are part of something. You are part of something that's going to last forever. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible said there is now no condemnation of them that walk not after the flesh. You got to keep the the spirit of the vine, the vine, keep the spirit, let the spirit walk, work in you. And then the Bible talks about he's going to quicken you. In other words, quicken you, give you strength. At the living church, we promote life. The Bible, we talk about love everyone, injure no one, free someone, embrace everyone. And then we top it off by saying there's nothing dead at the living. You might come in there dead, but when we finish praying, when the pastor finishes preaching and teaching, you'll come out they are alive. You'll be strengthened. You'll go outside. And he says always, you will get off the disabled list. You'll be able to help somebody else. It will be your reasonable service to bless someone else because of what God has done for you. It is grateful. I'm grateful to be a part of the living church ministry and know not, we're not on the disabled list. You come in, may be messed up, but when you be with us for a while, the God is going to bless. Look around. There's so many testimonies. I can't tell everybody's testimony, but there are so many testimonies in the living church. People had heart attacks, been almost dead, cancer, or diabetes, you name it, and God has healed them. Why would you get out of something like this? You got to keep the spirit. You got to keep the the, the spirit, the vine. Make sure you stick with the vine. Your victory is guaranteed in the connection. The Bible says what shall separate us from the love of Christ? So tribulation, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, swore. It is written that we are killed all the day long and we're counted for sheep or slaughter. But nay, more of these things, we are more than conquerors. Look what he said, not just conquerors. You are more than conquerors. You have eternal life through Jesus. Your blessing is in the, the connection. Stick with Jesus. No matter what these times produce, stick with Jesus. No matter what kind of floods, stick with Jesus. No matter what kind of COVID it is, stick with Jesus. Because even if you allow to be taken out of here, but to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You blessed. You can't even die wrong when you got God. You're blessed if you're living. You're blessed if you're dead. Stick with God. That's your blessing. That's the connection. You must stick with God. Hallelujah. Stick with him. Don't care what it looks like. Stick with him. The spirit of the vine. That's why we don't get all upset. That's why the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. I'm blessing him because I understand no matter whether I'm sick, no matter whether I'm broke, no matter what's going on, God is soon going to come and take care of my situation. It's only a temporary situation. And because I know who God is, because I know he loves his creatures, that I'm not going to stay in this situation. So because I know this, I got faith to stay stick with them. I'm in a hall of fame of faith. They'll put my name on that list with those who trusted God. Your name I know is on that list because you trusted God. Apostle Parson, Lady Parson, the living church members, their name is on the hall of fame because they trust God. They stick with God. And so as we make disciples, we want their names to be on the list. We want to overflow that list. We want to run that list down 
through faith and what we have and what we know in Jesus. And it is our reasonable service to serve the Lord. It is our reasonable service to tell men how good he is. It is our reasonable service. Stick with God. Your blessing is in your connection to the vine. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We thank God for you. We thank God for the Living Church Ministries. We thank God for all that he's done. And we know God is going to continue to bless us if we stick with the vine. To stick with the spirit of the vine. You should be excited about what God is going to do in your life as you witness to others. And how you can share your blessings of what he's done for you. And we ask you to continue to be with us this month of September, every Sunday morning on Wednesday nights at 7.30, 7 o'clock, listening to the men of God come forth to bring the word. Your victory is in your connection, and your connection is to the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay connected. Keep the spirit of the vine. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.